Hi, welcome to Mooney Reads. My name is Beck, and today I wanted to focus on some book recommendations that uh, go along with a particular topic. The topic that I wanted to focus on is gender, um, specifically as it relates to transgender people. To give you some context for me and where my recommendations are coming from, I'm non-binary. I'm also a sociologist. My thesis research actually focused on uh, language around LGBT identities, specifically looking at the experience of trans and non-binary people. So I've read just a little bit on the subject, um, and I thought that I would kind of put out uh, some of the good books that I've read. This video will focus on nonfiction. I do have fiction recommendations, but there will be another time and video for that. Most of these books are written by trans and non-binary people. There are a couple of exceptions to that, and I will talk about those when I get to them. I do want to acknowledge, though, we tend to assume that the people who haven't come out and said that they're trans are just cis, um, but there is the chance that they're closeted. It's good to acknowledge where these authors are coming from if they are cis, but I also don't want to alienate anyone, um, especially if they do come out. I just wanted to note before we start, too, um, that language in these books is going to vary a little bit, and by language I mean whether they use like the word transgender versus transsexual, or whether or not they use the asterisk and stuff like that. Language changes through time, and in recent years it's changed very quickly. People have different relationships with language, so they have different reasons for using the words that they use. But even so, some of the books who might, for instance, use the word transsexual when a lot of people aren't comfortable with it, those books still have important perspectives. I think that it's important that we talk about why certain language is kind of problematic for a lot of people, but it's also important not to discount the whole book just because of a word that they used, especially when the word used to be the one that most people used. So I'm going to start off with some memoirs, work our way into some educational material, personal growth, um, and then on to some academic texts, and then I'll go into some titles that I'm looking forward to reading. So to kick off our memoirs, I have A Year Without a Name by Cyrus Grace Dunham. Um, this book is about Cyrus's experience being non-binary, coming out to themselves, coming to terms with themselves, figuring out their gender, or um, at least coming to understand um, the fluidity of it. This really focuses on a specific part of, in their life, um, kind of hence the title, but you do get pieces from their childhood and you kind of see how they're all connected. Um, this talks about kind of the fluid and um, kind of unidentifiable nature of gender or at least their gender and you kind of get that sense with the time as well. I really loved how this was written and um, a lot of this book really spoke to me on a personal level. I love how the book is written. This does deal with internalized transphobia a lot so kind of be aware of that. They also talk about their relationship with their body and stuff like that um, just so that you're aware. The next memoir that I have on this list is Redefining Realness by Janet Mock. This focuses on her early experiences in life um, growing up black and trans in Hawaii. It's engaging and interesting if you're wanting to learn more about diverse perspectives within the trans community. This is definitely a must read. I would put a content warning on this though. Um, obviously, again, they talk about transphobia and things like that since she is talking about her experience, um, but there is also a description of sexual assault. But overall, this is a really good memoir and important if you are interested um, in learning more about trans people and their experiences. The next memoir on the list uh, starts to go into kind of the educational territory a little bit more. We have Sorted by Jackson Bird. I absolutely loved this book. I pre-ordered it, got it right when it came out and read it. Jackson's story itself is really really engaging and interesting. I think that he does hit on some things um, that do get missed sometimes in the primary narrative that we end up getting about trans people. One of the coolest things about this book is that while he's writing his story, he also has some excerpts and things like that off to the side that are educational um, that let you know a little bit more. There's just kind of an example of one. Um, and then it goes on and spans the next page or two. So this book is really perfect for people who are just getting in, don't really know a lot about trans people, um, especially if you have a relative who maybe really doesn't get it, this book would be a great resource to give to them. But even if you know a lot about trans issues and things like that, this is still good because his story is really valuable and really cool. 
I found parts of it really affirming, um, even though I don't share his exact experiences because he is a trans guy um, and I'm non-binary. But it was a really cool read. In general, I like Jackson Bird as a person or as much as um, you can like another random stranger on the internet. Um, he has a YouTube channel that's really good and he used to do a whole lot with the Harry Potter Alliance. Um, definitely check him out if you haven't already and go buy his book. <laughs> with the next few, um, there are definitely still memoir elements, but we're still, we're getting even more into the educational material being, um, interwoven. The first one that I have is Gender Outlaw by Kate Bornstein. This is something of a classic. In a recent video that Kate Bornstein was in, she expressed that she didn't really have a pronoun preference, I believe. So we'll just use she and they interchangeably. The first one was released in like the mid 90s um, and this one was updated in 2016. She talks about her own personal experiences, identifying as a trans woman, medically transitioning, and then figuring out their gender. Um, from there, throughout it, she talks about her own experiences, how it ties in with different societal things, there's a lot of gender theory, um, but it is pretty accessible. I have not read this cover to cover yet, but I have read um, bits and pieces. It's a very important book, and definitely Kate Bornstein is somebody that you must check out if you're um, going to look into different gender related topics. This next book is one of my all-time favorite books about gender, and that is Trans Like Me by C.N. Lester. C.N. Lester is non-binary and they talk about their experience, but they also talk a lot about culture. Um, they talk about media representation and representation in history and how that has a real impact on trans people. I really enjoy this book. I also use it when I teach my women's and gender studies class, so it's pretty phenomenal. So the next book in our pile that we have is Trans, A Quick and Quirky Account of Gender Variability by Jack Halberstam. Jack Halberstam is another big name similar to Kate Bornstein within academia. In this, um, Jack Halberstam talks about his own experience but uh, also talks really heavily about representation and history and other topics that are really going to impact trans people. Uh, throughout the beginning he talks about the history of language um, and the fact that even just the word trans didn't used to exist for anyone. And he talks about how that impacted him and how it impacted um, some other people as well. This one I did read, but it's been a little while, so I definitely think that it's time for a reread. But it's definitely a good one to have on your shelves. It's really short and has some good content. Next up we have Whipping Girl by Julia Serrano. This book weaves together her own personal experiences, social commentary, and gender theory. The book describes itself also as part manifesto, um, so there's kind of like a social call involved as well more explicitly in this book. I've heard lots of good things about it. The bits and pieces that I have read are really good. I look forward to actually sitting down and reading it from cover to cover. Now we're going to move on um, into a little bit more explicitly educational material um, plus personal growth. The first one that I have to recommend is The ABCs of LGBT by Ash Hardell. This book was published under their dead name, um, so that will appear differently if you do go looking for it. But it is an excellent book. They worked with a bunch of other people from the online community to put together basically like an LGBT dictionary um, that has different definitions that people use. And there are also excerpts from people who actually identify as those terms and they talk about what it means to them and different things like that. Probably my favorite part of this book is the chapter about spectrums. They do talk about how it can be, you know, kind of your traditional point A to point B spectrum, but there are so many other ways to conceptualize yourself. There's a color wheel. Some people integrate the two concepts together. The person who wrote the personal excerpt for this chapter conceptualized themselves as a galaxy. There's just a lot of really cool stuff with this. I think that this takes kind of all of the bits and pieces that you might hear online of different definitions and puts them together and talks about these terms in such a way that it's easier for you um, to use them as tools for yourself if you're interested and also to understand how people might use these tools in a different way from you. So this is an awesome book. I highly recommend it if you want to know more about the community, want to know what all the words mean, but especially if you are LGBT yourself and you want to learn and understand yourself more. On the self-help vein, the next book that I have is You and Your Gender Identity, A Guide to Discovery by Dara Hoffman Fox. 
Dara is a non-binary person who is also a gender therapist and this book was really awesome. They talk about what gender is a little bit in some different ways that you can think about it. it. Kind of talks you through different questions for how to think about yourself, how to think about your past. They also talk about things like fear um, but also self-care and how to do that while you're figuring out all of this hard stuff. This was an excellent book. I didn't get to read it until I was already pretty confident about my identity, but it definitely made me feel a lot better about myself. I feel like I understood myself a lot better after going through this book. I wish that I would have had it earlier on. Um, I highly, highly recommend this for anyone who is trans or non-binary, or especially if you're questioning. Even if you are a cis person and you just want to understand kind of some of the steps that somebody might take to figuring out that they're trans, this could be a really good book to read and understand. This next set of stacks that I'm going to go into are more academic oriented. The first one we have is Transgender History, The Roots of Today's Revolution by Susan Stryker. This is definitely a good and important history. I have yet to read it from cover to cover. I did read chapters of it. This is definitely a solid book and really important if you're interested in LGBT history in any regard. The next book that I'm going to be talking about is Just One of the Guys, Transgender Men and the Persistence of Gender Inequality by Kristen Schultz. So far as I know, Kristen Schultz um, is not openly trans. However, this book um, goes over the qualitative research that she did with a number of transgender men. Uh, most of the research focuses on the workplace with these trans men. Uh, she does reference, though, trans women as well to kind of show the differences in experience that the two groups have. There's also a bit in the beginning where she covers history and talks about the differences and how people were able to access HRT or had trouble accessing it. This talks about gender and privilege in a lot of important ways, and it really goes over um, some of the other issues that trans people in general are facing. Um, so I found this book to be really important. I read it for one of my classes and I was really glad that I had to read it. The final two complete books that I have read, some or all of, are heavy academic. They're very dense. Um, they are still really important books though. The first one is Black on Both Sides, A Racial History of Trans Identity by C. Riley Snorton. This looks at, uh, the history of black trans people or kind of the intersection of blackness and transness and how it's come up in history together. This is really important because on all levels from academic to common high profile organizations, black trans people are really often erased. The LGBT movement is, in general is very whitewashed even though trans people of color were the ones kind of on the front lines doing a lot of the dirty work and stuff that had to be done for us to even have rights currently. So this is an absolutely important read. I have not finished it quite yet, but so far it's a solid book and I definitely recommend it. This last book in the stack is one that I can't not mention when we're talking about gender, but it is absolutely the most dense and hard to read book um, that I have in any of these stacks, and that's gonna be Gender Trouble by Judith Butler. Judith Butler is one of the authors that is not an out trans person as far as I know. She was writing a lot of this in the 80s and 90s, um, so there are some pieces of it that I would kind of criticize a little bit. She does rely on drag queens kind of a lot, and it makes me sort of uncomfortable. However, her writing was kind of a cornerstone piece for people talking about the social nature of gender. Um, she specifically talks about it in terms of performativity. Um, there's a lot that we can take from it, and it's definitely one that I kind of had to mention if I was going to make a video about books on gender. I have not read the whole book. I have read chapters, and I've read pieces of chapters. It's really hard to get through, but she is saying um, some important stuff. So that's Gender Trouble. So for this next section, I wanted to shout out two books that um, they don't focus on trans issues or LGBT issues, but they do include trans people when they're talking about some important societal issues um, that are conversations that trans people often get left out of. The first book is Not That Bad by Roxanne Gay, which is an anthology of people's experiences with sexual assault and rape. And I have not read this whole book yet because it's 
very emotionally taxing. However, there is at least one section of this book that's from a trans woman's perspective. Often we don't get trans people in these narratives about sexual assault, even though the number of trans people who experience sexual assault is really high. So that's really important, and if this is a topic that you're passionate about or want to read about, this is a really good book for it. Um, in general, a lot of the pieces in here are written really beautifully, the ones that I've read at any rate. So this is a good book to pick up. The other anthology that I wanted to point out was Colonize This, Young Women of Color on Today's Feminism. This, in general, is a really important book. I use it a lot. I've read the whole thing. In particular, I wanted to mention the fact that this book has a reading by a trans woman about reproductive justice. And that's not a perspective that we get to see a lot, despite the fact that reproductive justice and trans issues do actually have a lot of intersection in different ways. This is a really important piece. Um, in general, this is a really important book, so I thought that I needed to mention this one as well. In the last part of this video, I wanted to mention a few books that I have not read yet but are high up on my to-read list that are about gender. The first one is one that I bought pretty recently, and that is What is Your Pronoun? Beyond He and She by Dennis Barron. This is the third book, um, the last book that I'm going to be talking about that's written by somebody who isn't openly trans. However, he is a really distinguished linguistics professor, so more than qualified to write this. Um, this is a history of pronouns and how they developed in English and how this discussion of pronouns um, is related to other conversations on language that we're having currently. I am super excited to read this and I'm definitely going to be reading it sooner rather than later because if I want to publish any part of my thesis I'll probably need to cite this now that I know about it. So that's this one. The next book that I'm looking forward to reading is Trans Love, an anthology of transgender and non-binary voices edited by Freya Benson. This book talks about love, not just romantic love, although that, that is one of the topics, but also friendship love and kinship love, so familial love, whether that be given or chosen. This is just really beautiful. This is not a topic that we get to see a whole lot, and it is so important to have positive role models and positive examples of, you know, trans people who are thriving and who are loved. Um, so I am super excited for this book, and you should probably go out and read it, especially if you're LGBT, um, because you need to feel the love, because you deserve it, and so do all the people in this book. The next book that I'm looking forward to reading is Trans Power by Juno Roche, and this is a book that's, um, I think also revolutionary. You know, trans love, um, from the synopsis definitely seems revolutionary in certain ways because you don't get to hear about positive experiences of trans people. Um, and it's kind of reframing and reshaping things to see trans people as lovable, as inherently lovable, with it, which is the antithesis of a lot of the messages that we get from society. Similarly, this one is looking at trans identity but in terms of power and how being trans and having this experience can be powerful and good. Um, in general, both of these books, um, I have yet to read them, so I hope they're good. Um, but these books and books like this are really important, especially if you are LGBT or trans, in building your own personal sense of resilience. In this book, Juno, um, interviews several people, um, who are prominent in the trans community, kind of about their experiences being trans and how they... Are empowered, at least that's uh, what I get from it. Kate Bornstein is one of the people that she interviews. The next one that I have is the oldest one that's on this mini nebulous TBR, um, and that is It's Revolting Queer Strategies for Resisting Assimilation, edited by Matilda Bernstein Sycamore. This book talks about LGBT identity or queerness more broadly, um, specifically looking at it in a political context and social context. And, you know, like the title implies, it's Strategies for Resisting Assimilation. So it's very queer specifically. I'm really excited to look at it. It was written in the early 2000s. I think 2008 is the specific edition. So I'm interested to see what they say. I actually got this in a used bookstore at San Francisco, so this book is a little bit extra gay, um, and I'm excited to read it. 
the final book that I wanted to read, I technically have started, but I'm only a chapter or so through it, and that is The Queer and Transgender Resilience Workbook by Annalise Singh. Um, this is another kind of workbook related thing um, that's by a non-binary professional. The first chapter focused on queer identity and then the one that I'm on currently talks about other identities and I think they're probably going to talk about synthesizing them, uh, ways to draw resilience from different parts of yourself. I'm super excited about this. I think that more people need to invest in things like this, especially in a society where LGBT people are disparaged and discouraged. Building resilience and confidence can be hard, um, but there are tools out there and there are other people um, out there who are rooting for you. So those are just a few nonfiction books that I have read and would definitely recommend if you're interested in trans issues or looking at gender a little bit more generally or LGBT issues a little bit more generally. If you've read any of these books, let me know what you thought in the comments. If you're interested in seeing me do a focused review on any of these books, please let me know in comments. And also let me know what your favorite book that centers trans people is. Hopefully you found this to be informative. Hopefully you've got a couple of things to read now. Um, thank you all so much for watching. Bye!